What's up you guys, it's Steve here and we're getting word of what could be the first of many executive orders that could be arriving to get things done in Congress. Now, I'm gonna give you all the details, including arrival times for what we could be expecting to see here very soon. This is your stimulus check update, stimulus package update, and breaking news update. Now, I know a lot of people are saying we need to get executive orders done right away. This is what progressives are saying to keep Democrats in control. Now, in addition to that, we're also hearing that this might be the only way as they're trying to get stuff done in Congress, bipartisan support through legislation. If they can't do that, then they have to go the route of reconciliation, which is a majority vote with a unified Democratic Party, which is not happening either. So progressives, they have been calling on the president to step up and take executive orders and executive actions. Now, we've heard this call for stimulus checks saying, why don't you just issue them out on your own? Now, here's the issue. Congress holds the power of the purse. They have to allocate new funds. However, if there's existing unused funds, those could be reallocated via executive order. We're hearing there's over $800 billion worth of leftover funds that could go out, which could provide two $1,400 stimulus checks to everybody in the entire nation on a federal level. So there's that, but we're also hearing that there's a ton of other agenda items that have not been taken care of, not addressed, and they're asking him to do it now. And we're hearing that he is ready more than ever to do so, as we're starting to see headlines coming out like this, starting with this first one. Biden administration signals a decision on student loan forgiveness could be coming here very soon. Now I'm gonna give you the details. We've also got some video footage confirming this. As yesterday, we heard from Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, and he's gonna be discussing this, along with more spending on the way, more funds for Ukraine. He's gonna be talking about gas prices, is coming down and how we need to take care of this issue and how President Joe Biden, you're going to hear him call him out and say, you can do this on your own. You need to do it right away. We're going to be taking a look at that video footage with you guys. They've been saying this. It's starting to mount and build up as we're getting closer to those elections. Biden seems more open to canceling student debt broadly than ever before. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said this about a week ago. Now, also, we received word that Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer are currently discussing legislative moves to cut gas prices and tackle inflation. So right now, Congress has hit the ground running. They are trying to get stuff done before those midterm elections. So with that being said, we're going to be diving into the video footage so you can see it for yourself. And I'm going to be giving you the arrival time of when we're going to be seeing executive orders by. Now, before we do, though, also wanted to mention that the second channel, Steve Ram Finance, has got more content and more on the way. And if you're somebody interested in learning about growing wealth and personal finance, consider joining that channel. I'll pin a comment down below so you can click the link and go subscribe. Just shared with you the latest on Elon Musk buying out Twitter for $44 billion. What a lot of people are saying this is going to be doing for freedom of speech. Former President Donald Trump's Twitter account and how he said, Elon Musk, that he's going to be unlocking untapped potential in what Twitter has. And a lot of investors are speculating this could be very good for Twitter stock. If you're interested, check that out. And also on there, I've got content about advice I received from a multimillionaire to get financial freedom. And there's a lot more content on the way. If you're interested, check out that channel. But right now, let's get you caught up on the latest. Now, before we do, though, if you could do me a quick favor, just takes a second. Don't forget, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Helps me out a ton. If you appreciate the content, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Also, leave your comments, share this out. If this is your first time here and you like to stay up to date, come join the Ram fam. Totally free. Why not? Just hit the subscribe button. Turn on that notification bell. If you got any specific questions for me, I'm easy to get a hold of directly. Hop onto Instagram. Shoot me a DM at SteveRam3. And with that being said, you guys, let's go ahead and dive right in. And let's start off with the arrival time of potential executive orders. And then let's take a look at this video footage. All right. So for what we're hearing might be the first of many executive orders on the way. This is student loan debts. And here's the arrival time of which we're hearing it might be coming. So link in the description below to this article came out yesterday and it reads that tens of millions of Americans saddled with student loans may finally soon be hearing what the Biden administration has decided to do, if anything, on debt forgiveness. Not a single person in this country has paid a dime on federal student loans since the president took office, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said on Monday. She went on to say that President Joe Biden would make a decision about the cancellation of student debt before the conclusion 
of the pause that's currently on student loans. Now, just to clarify, that means they're saying he's gonna make a decision. We'll see if legislation can go through or executive orders. We're gonna be hearing from Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer here in just a second, but that means by August 31st. So they need to get something done here in the next couple of months we're hearing, and we're hearing they are gonna be taking actions by that time. So that is currently the time frame, the arrival for which we're gonna be seeing executive orders on student loan debt. And that also is gonna be right before we start really ramping up and rolling into those midterm elections. So getting things done right at the same time as reminding voters, hey, we're trying to help you out. Now, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. But you guys, let's also hear some additional confirmation from Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer urging the president to step up and do executive orders. Let's go ahead and take a look. Again, I repeat to my Republican colleagues, if you care about lowering gas prices and care about looking at what the large companies, oligopolies, are doing, join us in voting Mr. Padoya on the FTC. A vote against him is a vote for big oil and against the American driver and consumer. Now on student debt. For over a year, one of my top priorities as majority leader has been urging President Biden to cancel $50,000 in student debt for each student loan borrower. Right now, as discussions continue within the administration about the future of student debt, I again call on the president to take action, which he can do on his own, and hit the financial reset button for millions and millions of Americans. President Biden's done the right thing by continuing the moratorium on student loan payments. His actions have saved millions from financial ruin during the COVID crisis. But borrowers don't just need their debts paused, they need them erased. These extensions have been crucial, but borrowers can indefinitely plan out their financial futures three months at a time with the fear hanging over them that payments will resume down the line. With the flick of a pen, President Biden could provide millions upon millions of student loan borrowers a new lease on life. And he can do it without congressional action, because we know so many of our colleagues on the other side of the aisle are opposed to it. He can do it without congressional action. It's the right thing to do for our country. For generations, higher education has been a ladder up for getting into the middle class especially for black, Latino, Asian Americans. Unfortunately, student debt has become not a ladder up, but an anchor down, weighing Americans down. It makes it harder for borrowers to start a family, to buy a home or a car, live with financial independence. And for borrowers of color, the anxieties are magnified, often tenfold. Take this for example. The white median borrower will only owe an, uh, an O an average of 6% of their student loans 20 years after starting college. Meanwhile, the median black borrower will still owe a staggering 95% of their student loan debt in that same time span. Imagine being closer to retirement than to college and realizing you've only made a dent in your student loans. Millions of borrowers of color, millions more of borrowers in general, live with this reality. Once again, borrowers don't need their debts paused, they need them erased. This isn't just the right thing to do for our economy, it's the right thing to do for racial equity, and I'll keep urging the president to take this important step. And I say to my colleagues, I think the president's moving in our direction. My talks with him and his staff have been very fruitful over the last little while, and I am hopeful that he will do the right thing. We're getting closer, we're getting closer. On Ukraine and COVID funding, in the immediate future, there are two different issues that demand swift and bipartisan action from the U.S. Senate. Passing another Ukraine supplemental package and approving another round of COVID funding. In the coming days, the President's expected to send to Congress his request for action on Ukraine. We're going to make passing Ukraine funding a priority in the Senate, and I expect both sides to work together. As we've seen over the last two months, American support has gone a long way helping the Ukrainian people resist and even push back against Putin's savage, savage and immoral war. But the fight's far from over. The Ukrainian people are fighting for survival in a contest that much, that's much about democracy versus tyranny. There should be no question, no question whatsoever, about which side America stands on. 
we have a moral obligation, a moral obligation, to give the Ukrainian people the tools they need for as long as they need them. For this reason, I expect both sides to work in the same bipartisan way we did a few months ago to get a Ukrainian supplemental done. We also need bipartisan cooperation as soon as we can to pass another round of COVID health funding. I urge my Republican colleagues to work with us to pass COVID funding ASAP. It's very risky for the health of the American people, for Republicans to play political games at a time when we need more health funding. Let's be clear. This is an exceedingly time-sensitive priority. According to the White House, countries like Japan and Vietnam and the Philippines are already ahead of the U.S. in placing orders for treatment, for medications, for vaccines. The U.S. is largely unable to follow suit simply because Senate Republicans have blocked any new round of funding required to make these purchases. The longer Senate Republicans hold out on supporting new COVID funding, the greater the risk of other nations buying out all of the available supplies of vaccines and tests and life-saving therapeutics. And if they run out, it will take manufacturers months to make new doses. So again, to my Republican colleagues, work with us to pass COVID funding ASAP. Our country can't afford delays or political games that stand in the way. I yield the floor and note the absence of a quorum. So there you have it, you guys. That was Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer on the Senate floor telling us about all the things they're going to be doing. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And do you think they're going to be able to pass anything through legislation, through traditional means? Are they going to have to go through the route of reconciliation to get things done? Uh, we just heard from Joe Manchin saying that he is currently not on board for reviving Build Back Better, but talks have just started. So there might be a change. There might be a flip from Senator Joe Manchin. Now, all also, if none of this can happen through Congress, we're also hearing that executive orders and actions might be needed. Which one do you think is the route that we're going to be taking here to get anything done, if anything, before those midterm elections? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, you guys. But that is the latest. And as more information rolls out, know that I will be sure to keep you up to date here on the channel and let you know the latest. And as always, you guys, thank you so much for joining me. If you made it this far and you haven't already, don't forget to take a quick second to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Helps me out a ton. Thank you so much. Leave your comments, share this out. If this is your first time here and you want to stay up to date, totally free, why not? Just hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell. If you got any specific questions for me, shoot them to me in the DM on Instagram at steveram3 and consider joining that second channel, Steve Ram Finance, to learn about growing wealth and personal finance. More content on the way. But with that being said, you guys, once again, thank you so much for joining me and I will catch you in the next one. Take care. God bless. This is Steve.